Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. And today I want to address a question I've gotten multiple times, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. And that is, I'm painting only from other people's paintings or based on other people's tutorials. Is that enough in order to grow and learn as a watercolorist, as a painter? And the answer to that is actually no. Wait, 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 there's more. There's actually more. So here's the thing. I do think that tutorials are a great first step and it's how everyone begins. I remember starting not necessarily even from video tutorials because I didn't like to pause and then to play again. I'd either watch them and then paint based on the finished piece and try and recreate that or I'll just go to paintings of artists that I like and try to paint them just by observing them either from Instagram or any other place. My lens is a little weird. Uh, so yeah, this is what I would do. And it's a great first step. It's a great way for f tackling when you're getting started the issue of painting because you have no vision, so to speak. Unless you came from a different painting medium, for example, you used to paint with acrylics or gouache or oils, you're used to, or even digital, you're used to having a vision of, of something that you want to convey. Um, in most cases you won't and so you won't even know what to paint and you wouldn't even know what reference photos to take or use so it's just a big mess in the beginning and you need those training wheels you observe other people's paintings you paint based on them however the thing is you're working a very specific muscle and you don't want to just work one specific muscle that muscle is great it's important it's the muscle of technique of recreating what you see uh, of painting a wash like the person originally painted it. That's great, that's fine, it's an important part of painting, but you want to add to that a couple of other muscles. One of them is learning how to take your own reference photos and then interpret them. You want to be able to see something real with all of its details, with all of its nuances of light and shadow and turn that into a painting rather than just following someone else's work. You want to also not just train the muscle of paint based on someone else's stages in a video tutorial, for example, I know that this is the first wash, so I'm going to paint a gradual wash, top to bottom, I'm going to use red, yellow, whatever. Next stage, I'm going to add the light and shadow this way or that way, whatever. Next stage, no, you want to also be able to paint based on a finished piece, okay? And this is an important distinction because you can either follow a tutorial like, like blindly and not even think about the end result in mind, just repeating the steps. Or you can look at a finished painting and try and recreate that and imagine what the artist did originally. And those are two very different things. Um, it's kind of like if you follow it blindly, you may get better at performing each stage, but it's not necessarily going to lead to the end result you want because you're just following this step, recreating it. In the next step, re step recreating it. There is value to that, but it's not like trying to recreate a painting. And then the next level is you actually want to recreate a scene, something real that you see. You want to start simple. Uh, you want to start with something that is very accessible. And you, you, it will suck. It will be bad at first. You won't know how to recreate it. You won't have a vision for the main idea you want to convey with a scene. So you'll just kind of struggle with, do I want to focus on this thing? Do I want to focus on this, this um, per person in the street? or this you know, this sign that's next to it to the person like there's so much to it um, and even if you start with still life with something a little more constrained so do I want to emphasize the shadow on the apple or do I want to work with the highlight there's so much nuance even in the simpler quote-unquote scenes so that's the next step now I do want to add something else to the mix and that is plein air plein air I think I believe to be very important for this um, because it's, and I talk about it all the time, it's removing one more layer between you and the reference. So the first layer could be your painting based on someone else's painting. The second layer could be it's the real reference itself, but it's a photo. It's already flat. It's already been cropped. You already get that fed, spoon fed to you uh, on a silver platter. The next step is cut all that out and be out there in the scene. And then you don't have lines or you don't have lines around the scene. You have no idea what to what, what where to crop it. Do I include this, that? Do I focus just on the face or do I include some of the background or do I focus on just one thing in the background like this Pikachu here? You know, you don't have that uh, given to you. You have to actually think. And then once you choose your crop, you have to start really squinting your eyes, trying to find the big shapes, uh, trying to realize how am I going to simplify this based, for example, on the last lesson I did on the merging shapes of similar value. You have to 
yeah, like take the photo, turn it black and white in your phone. Try a lot of different things to get the right impression and then paint it. And it will be terrible. My plein airs, even after a short break of not doing plein airs, are terrible. I don't know what to focus on. I, I lose the overall impression. It's just so different. So, going back to the question, taking it back all the way to, is it enough to paint based on other people's tutorials? It is enough to get the gist of the basic technique to learn a bit how to control the water and paint, to learn how to mix the right color, to learn how to mix the right value even, even though you probably will not learn that unless you're really focused on that. That's another thing you have to really focus on separately. Uh, so that's great. Now looking at, looking at a final painting, that's great too, because you get to try and see how you can create that finished result without knowing the process itself. But the next step is you have to paint also from real photos and also from real life. It is an essential part of things. I think working from tutorials will get you through that initial 20% and if you're just getting started that's great. Stick to it for a while. Do it as long as you need for as long as you need to and if you're uh, more advanced but you feel like doing it also fine. Do that for a while. Work just on that. If that's all you want perfect do just that but trust me there's a whole world out there of possibilities and things you don't even know right now how much you'll enjoy by doing. By just switching to photos, taking your own photos, that's a huge one, and also by painting from real life. So that's my uh, long and short answer to this question. Should I, can I just work based on other people's processes, tutorials, and so on? Great training wheels, great place to start. It is what I'm doing here in this channel, providing you these processes, but in order to get the most out of them, in order to understand what's going through my mind when I simplify a reference photo, which I always, always try to share with you the reference photo as well, in order to do that, you do have to kind of experience it on your own and do it on your own. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I have tons of other videos, tons of tutorials. Be sure to subscribe and follow. I did, uh, you know, the live streams. You want to check these out. I am I'm considering turning them into faster processes if that makes sense just so that you don't have to watch two hours live stream just to get a process in let me know if you want me to do that kind of a snippet of just a 20 minute video for example just to make it a little easier um, but in any case thank you so so much for being here thank you for watching you are the one who makes whatever I do possible so I really appreciate it and I will see you again in the next video